Hi friends, welcome to my channel and welcome to the fourth video in the research methodology series for UGC NET paper 1. Firstly, I would like to wholeheartedly apologize for the delay in this video because uh, I was busy making videos for all the topics that you people were sending and I almost forgot that I have left this particular series in the middle. So yesterday when I decided that okay, I'm going to, you know, shoot a video on this particular topic, I could not actually recall what was the last topic I have taught you in this particular series. So I had to actually go back to my YouTube video and watch it to understand that okay, this is where I left last time. So I'm going to talk about the next topic in the series. So yeah, that was uh, about it. And I'm really happy that we are back again with this particular series. And the whole intention behind this series is to make paper one extremely simple for you. So that even if you're not getting time to prepare for paper one, at least by watching these videos half or I would say 75% of your paper one preparation would happen very smoothly you just need to take out some time for practicing the concepts at least we are going to sort it out in this particular video series so in the past video we have understood what is sampling we've also understood what is hypothesis types of hypothesis variables types of variables now what we are left with is research ethics now before understanding what is research ethics it is important to understand what is ethics in general. So ethics are basically a set of moral codes that govern our behavior. For example, we all go to shopping malls and we all go to departmental stores. Now there are various moments where we can put something in our pocket and steal. Right. But we don't do it. Why? Because there's a moral code which restricts us to get into such kind of behavior. Similar to that is research ethics. Research ethics are moral principles that govern the research process. Now we all know that research is a very, very lengthy, long process. Now in this particular process, there are episodes where you can do something so that you don't have to put in the hard work. You can also uh, get out of the way and try to, you know, manipulate the information. So all those sets of principles, the do's and the don'ts that you should keep in mind while doing a research forms the research ethics. Let us quickly look at certain do's and don'ts so that you get an idea of what research ethics look like. So uh, if you look at some do's, one of the most important do's is to maintain objectivity in the research. That means you should not put your personal biases in place while you are doing the research. Let's suppose there's an American who is doing a research on IQ level of people in America and people in India. Now that person might have uh, an idea about the IQ level of people in India and he might feel that people in India are really uh, not very intelligent and they are not, um, they don't have a great IQ. Now while he is doing a research, if he tries to put his judgments in between the research and not look at the facts, that would be wrong, right? Because we know we Indians are really good, right? So that's objectivity, which is the first do. Another important thing is to maintain the confidentiality. So that suppose you're doing a research, which is on a very, very sensitive topic, uh, virginity or sexual harassment or domestic violence. Now, you should make sure that the information that you've collected from people should be safe with you. You should not leak the information to anybody because that can cause a really big harm to that person. Another important do of research ethic is to take approval from the people before taking data. You can't like really go and uh, collect data from people. You should tell them the real reason why you are collecting data. And once they approve only then you should uh, collect the data from these people. Similar to do's are certain don'ts which you should keep in mind. Now, one of the most important don'ts is the three cardinal sins of research. The first one is falsification. Second is fabrication. And third is plagiarism. These are the three sins that you should always keep yourself away from. Now, you might be confused that what is plagiarism? How is it different from falsification? There are various other things in research methodology that will confuse you like the difference between workshop, seminar, 
कॉन्फ्रेंस सिम्फोजियम देन द डिफरेंस इन द स्टाइल ए पी ए स्टाइल एम एल ए स्टाइल ना वॉट इज एम एल ए ए पी ए दीज आर डिफरेंट राइटिंग स्टाइल्स सो वी ऑलवेज कोट राइट वॉट एवर इन्फॉर्मेशन वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम सम अदर सोर्सेज वी कोट वी हैव टेकन दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम दिस इन दिस बुक दिस पेज नंबर सो देर आर डिफरेंट वेज यू कैन कोट वन इज ए पी ए स्टाइल दैट इज अमेरिकन साइकोलॉजिकल एसोसिएशन उनका एक सिग्नेचर स्टाइल है दैट यू कैन यूज और यू कैन यूज द एम एल ए स्टाइल विच इज द मोस्ट कॉमन वन सो वॉट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज ना दीज आर रियली रियली ट्रिकी एरियाज फ्रॉम वेयर यू गेट अ लॉड ऑफ क्वेश्चन एंड यू नीड टू बी वेरी स्पेसिफिक एंड वेरी क्लियर अबाउट द डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन दैम राइट नाउ इट इज नॉट पॉसिबल फॉर मी टू टॉक इन टू डिटेल एंड यू नो take this lecture ahead so i would like you to just simply go to my either website that is courses.arpitakarwa.com or you can even download our app from google play store arpita karwa learning app and you will get the entire course on research methodology which consists of video lectures just like this they have a set of pdf notes for ready reference and a set of mock tests so that you can assess your level of preparation you can definitely go to my website and check out the topics that we cover in each of the units and if you like you can really go and enroll yourself you will get detailed lectures on all these topics and in that particular video series i have ensured that each and every confusion is cleared by me so i have made sure that i clear the difference between uh, a seminar and a workshop and how both of them are different from symposium or how they are different from a conference so all these minute details which are asked in net exam are covered in that particular course the course uh, details are available on the application the google play application as well as on the website also if you want you can contact on the number displayed there my uh, team is going to get in touch with you and will explain you clearly what Uh, all things you are going to get in the course and how you can enroll yourself in another really interesting thing from which you get a lot of questions is the thesis writing format now thesis writing format is important for a researcher to know because it is only by knowing the format you will be able to put your findings in a particular manner like i have done my research in 2 years but now it's time to finally draft whatever i have learn and whatever i have observed in a particular format so that i can present it to the world and the world can use it and can get benefited out of it that particular format is the thesis writing format so there is a particular way in which a thesis is written the first page of the thesis is the title page where you are going to uh, write your title the name of your guide then comes certificate where you are uh, given a certificate that you have done this research in a very objective way keeping in mind all the research ethics then is an acknowledgement page where you show your gratitude to all the people who have helped you in your entire research then comes a page of abstract where you draft your abstract which is a 75 to 120 words long summary of your entire research you are going to basically talk about Uh, the topic of your research and what all you have done in that particular research just like before reading a 200 page book we read the summary at the back so that we know whether we are interested or not similarly anybody who wants to read your research is going to first go through the abstract and then if that person finds it appropriate will go ahead and read the entire research post your abstract comes a page which is called table of content now this is basically index where you're going to uh, talk about the pages chapters that are there in your thesis and you write the page numbers where they will be located after table of content is the main body of the research which is going to contain chapters now chapters can vary from 5 to 7 to 10 and each, in each of those chapters you talk about a particular topic and finally post that you have a list of tables and figures so throughout the research you would be using certain tables you would be tabulating your data you would be using certain graphics so a list of those graphics pictures and tables is towards the end in this particular page then comes a page list of abbreviations abbreviations are basically short forms so whenever you've used any short form you put that 
uh, here. And finally, we have two other important pages, bibliography and appendix. Now, I'm not going to tell you what they are because I want you to take the effort to Google it, understand it, and then put that in the comment section below. Let's see who comments first. So you should tell me the difference between bibliography and appendix in the comment section below. And let's see how wise my audience is. So with that note, we come to an end of this particular topic where we have discussed in detail different different topics and subtopics related to research methodology. We began by talking about what is research, what is uh, the objective of research and gradually we covered variables, hypothesis, sampling. If you've not watched any of these videos, don't get confused. I have all of them in place in a separate playlist on my YouTube channel. You can watch all these videos in sequence to follow. And finally, you can prepare your own notes and sit for this exam confidently. That's it for this video lecture. I'll come up very soon with the next video. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpatakarva.com.